In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the most commonly used types of questions here in Qualtrics. You want to be at this point where you've got a um, survey open and started. I've got in my Qualtrics overview video, I show how to get to this particular point. And you've got a survey. Um, by default, it puts in one that looks like this at the very beginning. Okay. And, um, and we'll go ahead and we'll create this question. Let's say you want to create a multiple choice question, which this is. You're going to just ask, um, write any kind of a question that you want to, want to do. Um, just type in the wording of the question and then you come down here and then you can say, whatever may um, apply to your particular situation. And you'll see if I want more than the standard three, if I just hit enter after the last one, it's going to automatically give me another one that I can include. Or if I want to get rid of one, I can just backspace over that and um, it'll delete it. Say I want to add one more and I want to put other here. What you may want to do is you may want to have the option for them to type in a response. Um, you can do that with any of these here, but it is very often done with an other situation. You might say something like, please specify, or something like that. And then what I do is if I click on this box and click on allow text entry, what it will do now is give me a box. This is the size of the box the respondent will have to fill in here so they can type in their other option. You generally want the box to reflect the size of the, of the type of answer you want. Let's say I need a bigger box than that because it may be something longer. And then I can click back on here, back on this caret. Now I have this text entry size option available to me and I can choose a medium size box which would look like that or a large box which would look like that if you want something that would be quite wordy. So and again I would keep it small if you just want something brief um, so that people don't use that as a place to fill in other comments or things they just feel like saying to you. Okay, so we've, so that's that's basically how you would do a multiple choice question. I can add another question or multiple choice question by clicking on the plus if I want to go after this plus if I want it to go um, before or by using this button. Before I do that, I want to make aware if I click on this question number, I can give it a name. It may be useful to me because then when I download the data and it has all my responses, it won't just say Q1 and you'll have to remember what that is. It helps you remember what it is, but also it can be used as a variable name in statistical software. It just saves you some time. Okay, so let's say we want to add another question. Okay, this was Q3, yours might say Q2, but that's because I had done some things in here before and deleted one. So let's say in this case I want to add the question, what is your gender? If I hit enter, you'll see in this case it gave me automatic choices. It didn't do it up here because I didn't, you know, say anything in that question that clued into it that I was doing something common. Okay, a commonly answered question. Well, in this case, I did. So it, it pops out a default way of responding to that. This may or may not be how you want to do it. Okay, you may want some other um, way you may not want to include, maybe prefer not to say or do it differently. I like to put in um, instead, I prefer to self-describe and give them one of those text entry boxes. Okay, this is a case where I want to make sure the box is small because I want just a brief like label or name for, for how they're self-describing, not some lengthy explanation. So that gives them a clue as to that. So I can change what's put in there in spite of using um, the common options. Another thing we can do with here with um, multiple choice questions, okay, if I put it there, okay, um, if I come over to this use suggested choices, you see that once I did that, it put in these, this Likert type scale, this strongly disagree to strongly agree scale. But if I click on that carrot down, you'll see that there are a variety of options here. 
quite a few. You have to experiment with them, you know, to see what happens. Let's say I wanted to add something about sexual orientation. If I click on that, okay, then it fills that in here and I can just um, add my question wording. Okay, if that's something that I want to, want to ask. Okay, so that's um, basics. Now, the other thing to be aware of is over here, it, it gives you a first and allow multiple answers. That may be the case if you ask something where they may want to, to identify with multiple things. If I were to click on that for this problem one, see this one's highlighted in blue, so it's referring to this one. You notice I have square boxes here instead of circles. That indicates that this will be a question where someone can check multiple things. Maybe they identify with multiple things that may not make sense for this question, but you may have a question where that makes sense. Okay, it's kind of the check all that apply type of question, and I usually write check all that apply up here just to clarify for them that they can do that. Okay, so that's something that, that you can do right here. The other thing here is you can add the number of choices um, this way, okay? Now that doesn't do anything for this type of question, it doesn't add any um, automatic options, but for some questions it might do that. For example, if I were to put one in here, and the question I put in here is, um, I'm going to use a suggested choices, you see that they disagree to strongly um, agree. If I click more choices for this particular option, it does happen to fill in for you the wording. It figures out up to the seven, apparently, and that's it, okay? and um, so it just gives you those that many options to do it. And again, I can type on these and reword those. Um, I can reverse order them if I want the strongly and decree to come first instead of the strongly disagree. Okay, so that's something where depending on the question, you know, what it will do with it may vary a little bit, okay? So that's the basics here. I'm going to get into some of these more advanced options in other videos. Um, right now I'm going to continue with some of the other question types. Okay, let's say that I want to add another question. It may also, if I click here, it gives me the options, you see. If I click on, um, if I just click on this plus, it's just going to give me a multiple choice one, but I can go up here and change what I want. Let's do the text entry next. Text entry is a great option for any time you want them to write something out, fill in whether it's something short like age or it's something like a long explanation. So I could just type in here, what is your age? And then they can fill it in here. Now be aware with these text entry boxes, you can resize this box quite a lot. It has a lot more um, flexibility to it than this type of box up here did, which only gave us three fixed options. So for age, if I want to type age in years, I'm going to make it small because if I make it bigger, it makes it easier for them to like type it out as a word. Okay, I don't want them to do that. So I can make that smaller um, to reflect the size of what they should respond. Okay, and so, so I could do that. Um, to make that look how I want it. Now let's say I'll add a new question, I'll do it this way this time, just to show you how that works. Um, and I want something longer, like a comment box. Okay, I can use this option for that as well. And again, this can resize, but let's say I want even bigger than that. Well then I go over here, and it has multiple lines, which lets you do several lines, or essay text box. Let's say we take the essay box. I can make that quite large, okay? Whatever shape I want. And again, I suggest you make it, the size of it reflect what you would hope they would respond in, or at least the maximum you hope that they would give you. So, so you can put that in here. Again, with any of these, like I showed you before, you know, I can change the, the, variable name there so when the data comes out it makes more sense. I've already got variable name set up if I'm doing statistical analysis and I know what um, my data refers to. Okay, so that's that's how I would use that basic text entry. Let's add another question. 
In this particular case, I want to do um, text graphic. What this does, this is a type of, we call it a question, but nobody, where there's no response. You just are giving instructions or providing a picture or something like that. So what I would do for that, you click on that and you see that here I can just, it says question text, but it's just really instructions, whatever you want to say here, you can, you can put in this particular spot. And be aware, this way you can also upload a graphic or a picture you want them to look at. I often have this as the very first item, the very first thing on my survey, the very, very beginning. I can make it the beginning just by clicking and dragging. Drag it up to the top. I often put that at the beginning. And then, then I'll have um, like a, an inf um, implied consent document. And I don't type it out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in as a graphic. And so you see text graphic. This gives me all the options that I have for this. I'm going to click on graphic. Okay. And then when I'm, what I do once I've done that, I, I can either, I could delete this out once I've got a picture there. Sometimes I just type that there as a reminder till I get the graphic. Select on graphic for the question. You see you have graphics that you've previously uploaded. If you don't have what you want there, of course, you click on this upload a new graphic. Okay. And so once you've done that, um, let's just say I put this in here. I've got a particular, I've got that put in. Okay. So I'll put my consent document in there and it can also have text here or I can just delete that and have nothing there. It looks like it's just going to leave it to look like that. Okay. So, um, that's that text graphic. Again, you might do that as instructions, something where you have longer instructions than you want to put at the beginning of the question. You want, you want something just by itself, only instructions. Okay. Now let's add a new, the next one. This next time, a type of question right here, matrix table I use really a lot as well. This is something that is very useful if you're doing something like a Likert scale where you have a whole bunch of statements. And in that case, you'd often begin it with something like um, indicate how strongly you agree with each statement. You might have longer instructions. You can do what you wish with that. And then I'm going to put in here my various statements and you know as with the multiple choice you can put in as many here as you want either by just each time you do it hang enter or by over here telling it ahead of time how many there are going to be you can just put those in there or you can you can also just copy and paste them in, in from another file if you wish to so those are my various statements. And then across the top, I'm going to have my strongly disagree to strongly agree or whatever I wish to do. Now, if I type in just strongly disagree here, you'll see that it automatically figures out that's what I want to do. And it fills in the rest of them for me. It would also do that up in a multiple choice um, situation. So um, that puts that, that here for me. Um, and I can adjust, I can click on any of these and revise what it says, or I can use a totally different scale if I wish to. Okay. Um, again, it's going to allow one answer or multiple. There are some various ways that it can be done here. Um, using suggested statements, okay, is going to put it over here, which is not what I wanted. Okay. So, um, but... If I want to suggest scale points right here, I do have those by default selected because once I hit the strongly disagree, it recognize that. But I can click on this and I can change this to something else that I prefer. Maybe I want it to look like dissatisfied, dissatisfied. Okay. And I can change that. I can also change the number of scale points. I can do that right here. So if I wanted four or one and six or one and nine, however I one I wanted, I can either do that by increasing it here, okay? Or I can come over here and I can hit enter 
and that gives it one more automatically. Okay, and again, I can adjust these by typing over them to be exactly what I want to do. I can change this to, um, you know, be whatever I want it. If I were to give this this the name of like um, desserts, that's my, you know, that's what I'm going to call this variable. The data will come out of the data set, and it'll say desserts underscore then one to give me the response to this item. Desserts underscore two for this one, desserts underscore three for this one, and so forth, is the way the data is going to come out, which is quite straightforward and clean for statistical analysis. Be aware that if your respondent is answering this kind of question on a cell phone, um, it's going to actually give each of these to them one at a time. Okay, as opposed to looking like a table like this. It'll look just like this, a table. If they're doing it on a computer, again, on a cell phone, it will not look like this. It'll be one question with the choices and then another question and so forth. And you can see what it's all going to look like by using this preview button here. You can click on preview and it'll show you both what it'll look like on a computer and what it will look like on any kind of a cell phone. Okay, so um, that's the basics of using this type of item, um, and um, let's see if we hit transpose table. It's going to click it to look like that, which isn't really most often what you want. Maybe you do. There's a variety of options here, and again, all these options I'll get to in another video. Okay? All right, so that's the basic matrix table. Um, let's add a new question. Slider is kind of what it sounds like, got sliders. <laughs> you can have just one here or you can have multiple. So you can, you know, you know, um, fill in um, however you want to do it. Okay, and then if I wanted to do that, you notice that it kind of figured out from what I asked what I was going to do there. And I'm just going to put as a stem here either nothing or I'm going to put in a word. And then I'm going to delete these two out, which I can do by backspacing over them or by using the number of statements to get it down to one. So I could have multiple things and I can, I can do this um, a variety of ways. Um, you notice um, some options down in here that apply to just this particular question. Okay, you suggested statements. Okay, that doesn't usually, it's often not meaningful to do that. Um, you can tell it instead of 0 to 100 to be a different scale. Let's say I want it to be from 0 to 10 instead, and it shifts that to 0 to 10. I can have it use decimal places if I want. By default, there it's 0. Okay, um, grid lines, um, I think that's when you have multiple questions. Okay, and add a not applicable option. That might be something that's helpful that you might want to do. Okay, and you see that the labels are what's right up here. So I can, of course, type on any of those and change them. I can indicate how many labels I want them to have spread across the top there. Maybe I want more, maybe I want less. The minimum there is going to be five, at least for using this unhappy to happy scale. And you see, again, you can click on these and you can um, choose something that makes sense for you. Oops. You can um, edit right up there. Okay. So again, um, those are the basic, that's basically how to use that particular type of thing. Form field. This one's a little bit um, a more complicated um, type of question. If you click on this edit validation, you see it's going to be something quite complicated here. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one off because it's not something I use. And so I feel like if I were to explain that one to you, I might leave out important information or be misleading. Just be aware that kind of thing exists. Rank order I sometimes use um, if... Um, You can put in here what, whatever it is you want. And as many of them as you want. And then what, what they'll be asked to do is to slide these up and down to put them in, in the order 
the, that they prefer, okay? So sometimes that's useful. Side by side is also something that can come in very useful, okay? And um, it's any time that you have, well, you might ask multiple things about the same, the same thing. So for example, um, maybe I say eggs, toast, steak, whatever it may be, okay? And then I'm going to just, in this particular case, um, note that when I clicked off just right here, it gave me these block options. Blocking I'll cover in another video. I want to make sure my question's highlighted in blue to have the answers up here. I really just want two columns, okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to put up here, I'm going to change that one to say, um, breakfast. And I'm going to change this one to say dinner. Okay. And then I'm going to say, maybe I just say yes and no, or I could, if I wanted to, instead of just having yes and no for each of these, I might want to do a Likert type scale for each of them, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And you can see the number of columns right here is, um, is going to give me again the number of sections I have, okay? And the number of statements, of course, is the number of rows, okay? I can put in as many of those as I want, okay? And then there's a variety of options. This repeat headers would be um, if you wanted to separate a section because this got so long or something like that, and then you would re repeat the, the headers. Um, and that's something you can do with a um, to make it just look a little bit nicer. So that's kind of how, how this particular option might be used. Um, it's also possible, let's say I wanted to put in a third column, and this particular column I wanted to make open-ended. Okay, then what I could do here, okay, is I'm going to, um, I can have them, sorry, I can put it, I can have somebody here, or I've got to click on that column three, put some kind of comments they have, Maybe this doesn't make sense in this particular case to have that yes and no. What I want probably here is just one column. So when I deleted the yes, it made it one column. And it gets a little bit um, silly because it says comment twice. So you may be a creative with your wording in each of these spots. But that allows you to have kind of the open-ended text option as well. Okay, and because it's open-ended text, it's going to give me just this brief option here, short, you see really small, and it's going to, or we can do medium, long, essay size, or whatever, give myself more space in case you want space for someone to comment. So that's how you might use that question. Okay. The net promoter score isn't something I know anything about or timing. The graphic slider is, is similar to the slider we used above, except for it has a picture of some sort. Now what picture? Well, come over here and you can see the options that you have. Okay, a horizontal bar. Um, here, this will be similar to the slider we had before up above except for that it's vertical instead of horizontal. Okay, um, it could have a smile. These kinds of things are great if you're giving a survey to kids. Okay grades. So they have a variety of kind of fun creative options here that that might be useful depending on what you're doing. Okay. And so forth. So that's an option that they have here. Constant sum would be a situation where you want them to fill in um, values that add up to one or a hundred percent. Now right here, um, you know, what percent of your you can put in here whatever makes sense and then maybe you put carbs, protein, fat, 
and then you want these to sum to one or a hundred percent. Well, you have um, op the options you have here. It's going to give you either as um, choices bars. So in this case, I would they would be dragging the bars so that they add up to that constant. They still have to add up to hundred, but they'll be able to change the bar size as opposed to just the boxes to type in. They also have the sliders option. Okay, so they have those particular various options of ways you can deal with that as well. You've got, you can have it this particular format instead if you want, which is probably um, more concise, you know, easier to look at. I would probably put in parentheses must sum to 100 or something like that there. You can add a symbol uh, um, before if, for example, you wanted, well, let's say we wanted to put a percent symbol after each one. Okay, maybe that would help them there, okay? And um, so that's how that works. This, these are ones that need to add up to 100, 100%. Okay, now a um, variety of others here. Um, I haven't worked with this file upload, so I'm not really sure what options it has available. Pit group and rank is a little bit, um, it can be useful. Um, let's say that you have a whole list of items here and you want them to put, put them in three groups. That can be useful, okay? where you, you might just have any list of anything, you know, and they, they've got to decide whether each item goes into high, medium, low, and so forth, okay? And um, you can have more than three groups. It allows you to do that over here, so forth. The suggested things often will default to this Likert scale or else you've got um, other options, you know, that you can select okay and this is just going to um, I'm not actually sure what these things do here sorry okay now we we'll come down and let's the next let's see what other questions we have drill down is one where um, you're going to put let's suppose I put a variety of things in here Okay, and so forth. And this is going to let you choose basically like one, two, three, four, um, or that kind of thing for it. Okay, um, up here you can choose what those things are. Then it, it's a little bit complex. You have to upload a file. So, for example, I could put in here, it could be a file with one, two, three, four, so it would just be a different way to rank it, or I could. Um, in the file could be breakfast, lunch, dinner, could be the words written in there, okay? And if I put breakfast, lunch, dinner, then when I when this respondent clicked on that, they're going to get to choose breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They're going to get some choices there. So that's something that can be useful there. Signature, a uh, little more complex, you know, that's for doing online signature. I suppose I haven't worked with that, and I haven't worked with some of these other various options here that are a little bit more rarely used. Um, the one thing I did want to show you um, in this particular section is for any of these when you um, have this here, okay, when you've written in your question text, you can click on this rich content editor. If you click on rich content editor, that's how you can do things like change the formatting, okay, um, you know, that would be size right there, basically basic format. Um, the font you want, okay, so I can, you know, select that and I can change it to a different font, okay. I can change the size um, of the font. So that's something you can do, bold italics and so forth. Um, over here I can insert a graphic, so if I want them to see a picture and respond, make a response related to that picture. This is something called in, inserting pipe text. That's something I'm going to cover in another video. It's a little bit more complex. Again, this just changes how many of these things we can see, you know, our various 
the various options here that we have. I can have a hyperlink to something, put in a table, you know, bulleted lists and all kinds of things, insert even media here. So there's all kinds of things I can put within this, this question text here. Um, by, and that's true of any of the question types that I can, that I can do that for. When you get to particular responses, um, you see that if I click on that, I can also use the rich content editor for these, the rows, whatever the responses are. And you'll see whatever it gives you as options here are things that it, could, that, you, that it can put in. So it could put a graphic in there as your various responses and so forth. You know, you could have them ordering pictures, you know, in order of priorities or ta little tables and so forth. So you could put in quite a bit there using the rich content editor. Also be aware on these responses, um, you know, you most, for most cases, you have this allow text entry to come out. If you have that, you know, so they can also type in something like maybe you said cake, specify type or something like that. Then they would type in the type of cake that they like or something like that. Um, then this is going to come out as a separate, um, variable like a separate column of data in your in your um, output okay um, and variety of things here these move up and down you don't usually need to use because you can just click and drag things for the most part um, display logic I'm going to get to another video but that really has to do with only show this particular option if maybe they're male or female or something else or if they responded such and such to a prior question so um, or if they or if you had a you may have a file with um, information on all the people responding ahead of time with and you're inviting them from that file and so you may um, have in there particular information already about them and so you may say only if they're maybe only if they're a teacher and that's data you already had on the person there'll be ways to deal with that but we won't be doing that um, in this video and at the very end it always has the default response the thank you and there's ways in the setting to change that um, while we're working on um, adding questions i do want to show you um, the pay add page breaks to break it up you just have to click between questions to show whether you want to have a page break and that's the and use this preview button to to see to do a preview of it to see what it all looks like and then you can come back here and make any changes you notice if you do that it's going to open it in a new tab so that um, you can come right back to this while you're, um, while you're doing your preview <laughs>